after writing two transformational books myself and supporting many other beings to do the same, I've become enthralled by the deep and mysterious magic that's activated when we choose to say yes to ourselves and commit to the book writing journey. Of course, we want to inspire change and new perspectives in our readers, but the transformation that happens as an author, both throughout the writing process and by actually releasing your book into the world is surprisingly potent. I know I've been blindsided in the most disruptive and delicious ways by some of the changes my books have brought into my life. Writing a book is like casting a spell. Although we can never be completely sure what's going to be unleashed during the process, we choose to do it anyway. This Unbound One is a heroic journey. Each book has the potential to be a magical portal, a doorway to a new world, both for you and your reader. Each book has a very specific medicine that it's here to share with us. And each book gives us the opportunity to alchemize the magnificent imperfection of our experience into gold. The truth is that anyone can write a book. We could all get a few thousand words down and put them together. But what fascinates me is what happens when we allow the book writing process to go deeper. When we say, fuck it, get naked and dive way down beneath the surface letting go of the shoulds and any need to be acceptable, sensible or approved of. What fascinates me is what happens when we make ourselves fully available to being transformed by the very act of writing a book. This is Unbound Writing and this is the process we'll be exploring together here in the Unbound Writers Club. I'm Nicola Humber, author and founder of The Unbound Press, and I help magical beings to write the transformational book they're really here to write at this time. I'm your guide here in The Unbound Writers Club, and the aim of this podcast is to help you to feel supported, encouraged, activated as you embark on your book writing journey. Whether you're a first-time author or have many books out in the world, my hope is that you will find something here to inspire you. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to the Unbound Writers Club. Today we have one of our special Unbound Book Club episodes. It's a new lunar month and that means we have a new book club pick and this month it is permission to be rich five steps to become more powerful than money by unbound author unbound goddess tonya gauduso so tonya has been a guest in the unbound writers club i think three times before (laughs) she's a regular and this in this episode we are talking specifically about her book permission to be rich who it is for how to get the most out of reading the book and interacting with the book so that you get to transform your relationship with money and we're also talking about the journey that Tonya is taking you on through the book these five different stages that she will guide you through in her own unique way If you don't know the Unbound Book Club, it's a free book club that we run at the Unbound Press. You can sign up. It's where do you sign up? (laughs) It's at the unboundpress.com slash subscribe. And each month you will be invited to join us in reading a different book. So it'd be great to have you as part of that if you're not already. And like I said, this month, we are diving into Permission to be Rich. So I wanted to speak to Tonya today to give you a flavor of what the book is like. So let's dive in. So Tonya, welcome back to the Unbound Writers Club. Hello, hello. Happy to be back. It's very exciting to now be in the club. (laughs) Back in the club. Like I said, like you're a returning guest. (laughs) Yes. I think this might be your fourth time in the Unbound Writers Club. Very possible because there was my book had a lot to give. Yeah. And now it's it has now it's on its own and is ready to just be yeah out there for the reader. 
So exactly. It feels good to be here again. Uh, always good. Always good for you to be here. And we're going to dive into talking about Permission to be Rich and the book and all the goodness that's in there. But, you know, I always start these conversations with the same question. And I know you've answered it before, but I think it's different in each moment, certainly in each season. So what does it mean to you to be an unbound writer? Uh, And every time there's a different answer. I think it really is just accepting the process and allowing whatever version of myself that wants to come through to come through for whatever is needed at that moment and not judging it. And like, yeah, it's like a surrender process where it's like, oh, but you know, when I did this a year ago, I really needed to be forceful and do it. And like, I love, obviously my book is full of formulas and things to do. Like I love a formula. So I think really Unbound is really about embracing the process and what's needed versus what I want to bring with it and to continue just using that and just allowing really being willing to bring out whatever is necessary for that moment. Yeah. 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 I love that. We almost like need to surrender to our books. I think that's it. <laughs> and I know over. you're and, that. Over. And, and yeah, and then just getting used to it. Right. And then it, it doesn't feel like now since it's been so much, it's not as painful as a process anymore. Right. Yeah. It's sort of like I'm getting used to the constant transformation that's needed and wanted and not judging it and just being more um, accepting of it. Mm, Absolutely. Absolutely. And talking a transformation that, that leads me right back to the book, permission to be rich, five steps to become more powerful than money. Yes. (laughs) So very needed in the world because We need to transform our relationship with money, I believe, in so many different ways. But yeah, tell us a little bit about the book and what your intention was and is for the book. Yeah, absolutely. Um, It's cool because I'm like reconnecting to the information in the book and the intention of what it's meant to do out in the world. And um, I've been leading workshops again for um, the Coalition for the Homeless as a first step program. And I had forgotten that it was from those group of women at the end of the workshop, they'd be like, how do we get this information? There's so much information in here. They're like, I understand what you're teaching. Um, it's not judgmental. I don't feel like you're using financial jargon. Like I'm understanding what you're saying. You're really teaching it in a practical way. Like, how do we work with you? And I didn't have anything to give them other than the worksheet that I used right then and there you know, go on my Facebook page. And so it really was this call to have this information in a book, the way that I teach it, because I feel like since I'm not a CPA, since I'm not a financial advisor, this is just from me learning with working with people. It's a really practical way to teach money because financial literacy is not taught. And then bringing in the component of abundance, femininity, and just really it being a way to say thank you and use it in that way. So really coming from a positive point of view. And so it was getting everything I teach into one source that was affordable so that if someone wanted this knowledge and this information, here it is and I can give it to it. And because it's like really, you know, in on the scale of like getting this information out. And the reason why it's so important to get this information out is because the world is very much so anchored in scarcity. You know, we could see it with everything that's happening, patriarchy, and just like all of that old way, that old money paradigm has to go. Mm. And a new way needs to come forward with it being that there is more than enough. We have more than enough. We live in a material world and that's not what matters. Like, you know, we have the richness. And so learning to use money as a tool that it's meant to be will transform everything and not have us raping the planet of all of its resources and, you know, killing our mother in that way. So it has a lot of intention, but it really is once we understand that we have all that we need, we start to operate differently and have different relationships in our lives, not just with money, but with everything surrounding us. And so that's really my intention was like, get the information and on the bigger scale, how do I leave this planet in a better place than when I came into it? And how do I create that ripple? Oh, wow. That's amazing. And yeah, I love that sense of like having an intention for the individual reader, but also for 
like the world for the collective and for the planet you know it's not about this oh well I'm just going to look after myself and and not worry about anyone else which I think is a is a kind of perspective that we're conditioned to hold around money that it becomes like this real fear-based um scarcity kind of energy so I love that you bring that through who would you say the book is for who's going to benefit most from reading permission to be rich I'm going to go general anyone who struggles with money so Mm -hmm. anyone who really feels like there's a disconnect to money anytime you have to deal with money there's stress don't know where to start with it um also if you have a handle on money and just are not connecting to the way that it operates in the world and wanting to connect to a bigger letting go of the old money paradigm and then bringing into like, Hey, money is an expression of love. There's more than enough. And just wanting a new mindset around how money can operate in the world. One of love. It is also for that, but also for people who have been struggling to put a structure in place with their money. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is based off of the feminine. So I do have a gear towards women. I feel like if they do gravitate to it more and just are really feeling like I don't know where to start with my money. I've tried before and this just doesn't work and getting stuck in all of that. Like the whole system that I created was a whole, like there's a 180 with money in creating, you know, blending the practical and the magical side of money. So I really do think what hasn't worked before. I had someone who read my book and they never read a money book before. They had such a block that they couldn't even read financial books and they read my book and they're like, I was able to read your book. They're like, I kind of felt when I first started reading it, it's like the financial Bible. And these were the words. And it was actually a guy who read it. So he's like, as soon as I opened it up, I felt like this is gospel. This is, he's like, oh my God, I never thought money could be this way. So it really is for like those who just want to have a healthy relationship with money and actually want the tools to do it because it's all in there. Yeah, yeah. I love that blend of the practical and the magical. The financial Bible, I mean. (laughs) I got pretty excited when I heard that. I was like, yes, the words are working. Like that is from the reader. Yes, please. (laughs) So you heard it here, everybody. Like you need to get your hands this book and read it with us this month in the Unbound Book Club. (laughs) Yeah, and it's really the truth. Like I, I do believe that money is a spiritual practice. I really think that that's what I mean with like a shifting of a paradigm, like on the magical side of like, it is just a way for us to say, thank you. That's, that's what money is. And so if we just start looking at it that way, it is just a way for us to bring in a new way of celebrating life and having it be a celebration versus this scarcity crap that the good old patriarchy wants us to be controlled by. It's like, no, that's not what it's meant to do. Like, yeah, no. I love that. I was just... I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent, but, you know, this has been really coming through strongly for me. Obviously, we've both been on like this huge journey and continue to go on a huge journey around money and our relationship with it. It's something that we've explored together. You know, we've run the sacred money circle. And what really landed for me recently was like the sacredness of the exchange. When, like you say about money, being a way of saying thank you and like really feeling that even when I'm like giving money to somebody spending money or it's coming to me just really allowing myself to feel the sacred quality of that exchange and and really appreciate that and I think that's the kind of thing that comes through in your book yes there's all the good practical stuff and there is you know the magic the magical energy as well the sacred energy and I just love that blend and I love that you start with your story in Mm. the book as well. I think that's what makes it so kind of easy to read because you draw us in with your story and sharing your own experiences around money through your life, right from way back when you were little. Oh, yeah, it it absolutely started. It was, you know, that's what's beautiful about writing a book with you is like you never know at least I didn't know the structure of my book and my story with money started to come in. I'm like, what is this all about? And then I realized it like, this is my PhD, right? Like I said, I went to college. I got a business management degree. I worked in finance for 10 years. I mean, it's all in there in the book, but do I have a PhD in finance and accounting degree or finance it's my series? Like, I don't have any of that. I learned from life. And I think that that's why it resonates so much with people because it's not getting confused in the jargon of things. 
And then I think because I wasn't under that influence, I'm like, hey, money is really fun. Like, this is like a really cool energy behind it. And yeah, in the book, I have every damn worksheet I've ever created for clients. I have my program, like the five F's to financial freedom are in there. Like, and once you get the book, it's all available and free for you to get. But what I've learned is like, right, you could do the practical side and learn all of that, but it's the magical. And this is something that I'm constantly talking about when I am talking about my book working with workshops and working with people. Like if you just take one thing away and just start looking at money as a way to say, thank you, even mm -hmm. when you're paying your bills, like it's a sucky process to pay your bills. Like all the money you work for. Well, how about like, thank you for the roof over my head, paying your cell phone, but like, Hey, thank you for the means to connect me to my loved ones, to communicate with them. And when you buy a cup of coffee or you drink, like, Hey, thank you for that. And then when someone's paying you, they're mm -hmm. saying thank you to you. Like, wow, like how beautiful is that? And like gratitude is the quickest thing to connect us to abundance. So if that little change just happens, so much magic starts to come in on money that's, you know, not really looked at in that way when you put the TV on, especially now with, oh God, like, you know, the time we're in right now, inflation, everything is, yeah. I mean, reeking of scarcity. And it's like, even more now, it's important for us to start putting down our own practices to anchor into abundance because as soon as you turn the tv on they're going to drag you right into the scarcity and that there's not enough and that's just not true absolutely absolutely yeah this is the perfect time i feel for us to be focusing on permission to be rich in the book club and i also know because you know there are a lot of fears bubbling up right now around like cost of living increases certainly here in the UK, like fuel prices increasing, mm -hmm. fuel bills, you know, to heat our homes, even though we're going into the summer, but you know, all of this stuff, food prices, mm -hmm. like everything, it just seems like every time you catch the news, there's something new um, around inflation and cost of living. So I know people might think, oh, I don't really want to look at the money stuff right now, because I'm feeling a lot of fear. So mm -hmm. what would you say to somebody who's feeling like that, like feeling some resistance to even kind Kind of relating to money or even thinking about shifting their relationship with it yeah so the first thing that came to mind is like that's the that's the first myth right it's like the um it's the first thing that i teach it's in the focus stage and it's like i don't know or the avoiding and the not wanting to deal with it because it's so bad is actually you giving your power away to money and is the way to continue being controlled by money and so knowing your numbers knowing the situation you're in, knowing all of that information actually now puts you in the power position to then tell your money where you want it to go versus feeling like it's controlling you. And so it is that myth of, oh, I don't want to create a budget because I don't want money controlling me. It's actually the opposite. The budget is actually what creates your freedom. That's mm -hmm. how you find the pockets of money so you could save. That's how you can make the smart decisions. I'm not saying that inflation isn't real. I'm not saying that the gas prices aren't going up and that rent isn't, but how can you call in and how can you have the universe supporting you if you don't know what you're asking for? And so the first thing you need to do is have clarity. And that's the most important thing. And then that's what helps combat the fear. Because the fear is living off of I don't know. And it's creating these crazy scenarios. Most times from when I would work with people are not even true. What you're creating in your mind is a lot worse than the reality of what it is. So I would say the clarity is the answer to creating the freedom and the first step to creating that freedom for yourself. Yeah, I just want to repeat something you said that like fear lives in the unknown and or thrives on the unknown, you know, it does, you know, when we don't know, and it's like, Oh, I'm just gonna put it over there and not look at it. That's when the fear can just run wild, because we don't know what our financial situation is. And I totally get that resistance. Like, even though I used to work in finance, I still can resist this stuff sometimes <laughs> even me even even I get caught up in it like I'm not there just because I wrote the book it's still that's what I, I always say this with the five stages like it's a process of rinse and repeat it never ends because what happens is you get to the next level and the next level of emotions and fears come in the point is is to learn how to use the tools to move through them versus getting stuck like there is no magical kind of thing of just moving through life with, you know, without that. What you do is I also think too, it's inviting your fear in, like don't shame it. Don't guilt it. Money is that topic is so filled with shame and guilt and worry. Instead, listen to the fear. Sometimes it has a really good point. Like, Hey, this is a lot. Listen to it. Don't let it control you. 
become friends with it is something that I say too, is when it comes to fear is like, listen to it. And like, yeah, the unknown can be scary. And sometimes we need to be in the unknown, but it's different than I don't know and avoiding. And yeah. so that's the thing. Sometimes their information just isn't there. But if there's information there, then that's where fear has the control over you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, you know, I'm thinking about creativity and like allowing yourself to be in the unknown can be so, so powerful. Yeah, but like you said, if you're just avoiding mm-hmm. like knowing that is there, <laughs> yeah. um, that's that's when it can become an issue. So tell us about these five steps, these five stages that are in the book that you're taking the reader through yeah I'd love to so through my years of working and like I said all in my book has my story of how I created it but I realized like money travels through five stages that I call the five f's Mm -hmm. and so it's focus foundation freedom flow and fun Mm -hmm. and I always say there's fun but fun exists it's at the end but exists through all of the stages because like if you're not enjoying your money and having fun now you're not going to want to do shit with your money or like it's not meant to be for when you retire and so briefly what each stage represents and so the focus stage which is stage one is all about getting clarity on your numbers right I feel like this is like the practical masculine side of it where it's like what's your expenses what's your income what accounts do you have do you know how much money do you need to save what's your money story do you even know the story that's running in your mind and so the whole goal of this stage is to get clarity right because that's what we said so that we could release the fear Or just be like, hey, fear, thanks for what you said, but I got the numbers now. It's actually really not even true. This is what it is. So we got it handled now. So like you could take a seat and I've got this. And so focus is really about getting clarity and no longer allowing yourself to say, I don't know when it comes to your numbers, which then, right, you have the clarity like, oh, this is great, which then moves you into foundation. Now that you have your foundation, you can move into building your financial house, right? It's like creating the structure with this new mindset. And so There's always six categories. It's like the expenses, the income in each of these. And so you're still living in the practical. There's a little practical and magical here too, because the first thing I do is connect you to your vision, right? Because it's going to be really hard to continue forward if you don't realize what you're moving towards, right? Mm -hmm. And doing that. So having your vision of what it is that you want to create, how do you want to feel when it comes to money? Like, how do you want to feel in general at the end of the year, at the end of five years? And so really connecting to your vision helps create the structure for what you're calling in. And then from here, we now structure out your money and really where you create the budget, right? If you will, around all of your numbers and start feeling good about it. And it's great. So now you have the plan, you're ready to go, you feel amazing, but freedom only comes, which is the next stage, stage three, when you take action. And so Mm -hmm. this stage is all about taking the action because as any great plan or dream, if you don't take action on it, that's all it stays is a great plan and a great dream. So really- Stage three, freedom is about taking action on the things you need to do. And it can be as minuscule as like opening up your savings account, doing these little things, but I've seen them not happen. And what happens in this beautiful phase is your emotions start to come up. And so in the book, there's a lot of tools in deciphering your emotions because the the thing that really controls our spending power are our emotions. And that's why there's the marketing world that has billions of dollars because they play you on that. So really starting to understand the emotions connected to money creates the freedom along with taking the actions. And so that's really what the freedom stage is all about. So now like, right, we're moving and shaking, things are coming up, you know how to move through them. And then this is what creates flow. And this was really about, I realized when working with people, how do we sustain these habits, right? Like you could take action, but after a while, you could kind of reach a point of burnout, stop, not wanting to do it again. So like, how do we sustain these habits and keep them going? And flow is really about learning to embrace yourself, having a mind, body, soul connection, because you are the tool that uses money. Mm -hmm. So if you're not in control of yourself and have a well-being, holistic approach and a balanced way of doing things that are grounded, then the intention of money is never going to change. So flow is really about connecting to yourself and just starting to free yourself from money. I always say like, here is where I say to start having money dates, where I look at it as like a money ritual and a spiritual practice. And then from here, you start to realize like, oh shit, this could be fun. I'm having like a good time with this. This is amazing. Like, you know what they say about money really isn't true. 
And that's when you really move into the fun stage. And that's when it's like, I say embracing doing any of this, like community is super important in anything that you do. Even in the book, I suggest getting a friend or a buddy to do the worksheets with, you know, it is about celebrating and celebrating your wins and your, and, and the, the failures because they're necessary. It's, it's absolutely needed. And so it just teaches all of the things of like how to, and those are like the five ways it moves through. And in the beginning, you got to go through them in order. But I feel like once you do, you'll start to realize that you're in different stages. And so you would just go to the book to update your worksheet. Something, the numbers might've changed. You're like, oh, I need to do that. You're in a totally different position now of being in the driver's seat and not being affected by the outside world because you realize you're connected to something bigger. And when you're clear on it, the universe answers what it is that you want. And so you learn how to control so you're not susceptible anymore to the outside world. Things are happening around you, yes, pandemics and wars and all of that, but you are now in the driver's seat to now say what it is that you want and you become the creator of that. And that's really what this is all about. Wow, it makes me want to dive into the book again, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) I just got this really like clear sense, particularly towards the end there of like all of the energy leaks being kind of sealed. So like money really gets to flow in the most Mm -hmm. powerful way. Like it's not kind of like, just like leaking out all over the place. Um, So that's how it feels to me. Yeah, I love that because it's true. There's so much that doesn't have to do with money, but the emotions and the energy that worry creates mm-hmm. and leaking out and, and then makes us feel so exhausted that, yeah, why would you want to deal with that with all the leaky energy? So it is corking things up, yeah. and, you know, like <laughs> fixing the boat so that you're not like, you know, leaking and you know, every now and then a cork falls out, but you know how to, you know exactly where it is. You're like, in. oh, it's that one in the back. All right. <laughs> I get it. You know, you're not as, you have a different relationship with it. And I really say that that's what this book does is it transforms your relationship with mo- to money. Even yeah. if you don't do the worksheets, even if you just read it without doing anything in it, your perspective on money will change. And so that was really the goal of the book at the bare bones of like, I just want people to know that you could be and have a healthy and fun relationship with money. And it doesn't need to be hard. Yeah. So if somebody's listening to this, uh, and maybe they've bought permission to be rich already, or they're thinking, right, okay, it's in the Unbound Book Club. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it this month. What advice would you give them, or kind of encouragement that's gonna? How can they get the most out of the experience of reading the book? Drop any expectations mm-hmm. or judgment that you have on money, and um, if you could just do those two things of looking at it as information, and then I would really, there's a lot in there. I would just read it without doing any of it first to just get the information. There's a lot to be done here. I did that intentionally so that, like I said, if you want the answers, they're there. But first, allow the information to kind of just sweep it over and allow yourself to read it in the time that your body wants to read it. Like there's a lot of information. So if you find yourself like, needing a pause because you need to digest it. Don't make up like, oh, you see, I can't make money books. I can't do this. I can't do that. No, it trust that your body knows how to receive the information and then continue just going on with it. That's why I say read it first. And then afterwards, go back and do the worksheets. Do not try to do everything all at once because there is a lot to be done and to have. So if you just read it, you will get the magic from the book. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can go back through and like totally do it at your own pace. You know, start yeah. with the worksheets. And yeah. do it with a friend. If you are a yeah. part of a book club, like I, I really do. It's, you know, Julia Cameron does that in the artist way. It's like another one where it's so much information and worksheets. You're like, oh God, this is over. I can't handle this. Right. Don't do it. And then grab a friend. That's what makes it fun. That's why it's one of the stages. And like go back and do it and then turn it into something fun. Amazing. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Get yourself a permission to be rich buddy or buddies and yep. get together and yeah, move through the yeah. together. That's, that's what makes all the difference. And it's a powerful step already because you're already transforming your relationship with it because you're not supposed to talk about money and you know, you're breaking already that myth of it being a taboo topic. So yeah, have fun, grab a buddy, grab the book, do the same thing. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, 
it's just always so good to speak with you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, this book is just, uh, it's the most incredible, powerful and magical book. I just love it. Like I was saying before, I've got my copy here and it just, oh, it just feels so powerful to hold it in your hands. People are listening to this and they want to find out more about you and your work. What's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So the best way is to go on to my website because everything is connected through there. So it is tonyag.com. So that's T-O-N-I-A-G.com. And everything is there where you could find all that I do, my social handles and like everything lives on there. So yeah, that's where you could find me. Perfect. And we'll make sure the link and the links um, to your social media as well are in the show notes. And to those listening, just keep us posted for how you're getting on this month in the Unbound Book Club. You can let me know, you can let Tonya know. That would be really interested to hear what bubbles up for you. Holding yeah. space for you to have a magical experience as you move through the book. And yeah, thank you so much, Tonya, for being back in the Unbound Writers Club. I'm sure you'll be back here another time. <laughs> Yes, I mean, if, if, if the past has shown anything, I will certainly be back. And then even yeah, for anyone who's in the book club, and if you have any questions, like, please reach out to me and let me know who you have. I'm more than happy to answer. But uh, yeah, this has been a blast. And yeah, I love that the magic of the book is, is uh, in the hands of those who are desiring it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much, Goddess. See you you too. too. All right, bye. <laughs>